Paul, it ended 4-1, ultimately. Your reaction? Um, massively disappointed in terms of the scoreline and, and the way that the game finished. I think we know what we were up against and kind of said that yesterday and at times they certainly highlighted that. But I think for you know a, a kind of big period of the game, we were in the game and we had one cleared off the line at 2-1. Um, and you know, for myself, as in, just said to the lads there, I'll take responsibility in terms of we put a lot of attacking players on to try and get something from the game, and as a result, that perhaps um, influenced how the game finished to a degree. But I still think, you know, then the flip side to that, I've also got to take responsibility in terms of the players that are out there, and the the fourth goal, 100%, is avoidable. You know, that that's. Uh, if I said it was Sunday League, I'd be disrespectful to Sunday League. That's a ridiculous goal to give away and just adds to, obviously, the scoreline and, and how it looks now. I'm not stood here saying that we were an equal to, to Peterborough. They're obviously a, a very good team. But at the same time, like I said, you've got to stay in the game and, and we've done that for large parts. But in the end, we just lost discipline and, and they were breaking and, you know, at the bar. But like I said, to give that goal away as well, just adds to the scoreline that is, is, is obviously disappointing. Yeah, Peterborough carried a threat throughout, as they, as they always seem to do. Uh, do you feel the final scoreline was harsh in any way, 4-1? Um, I'm not sure, because like I said, they did look a threat every time they attacked, really. I thought we did some good bits of defending, but at the minute it looks like we too easy to play against. I think in possession we can cause teams some problems. I thought we got into some decent areas, a couple of decent moves. Then, as it progresses, we got a little bit sloppy at times. And you know, I think that's a big difference of how many times we give the ball away under you know little pressure compared to a team you know like a Peterborough that I think make you work harder without it. Um, and we, you know, the lads have got to improve. They've got to understand that because. That's part of it. If you take care of the ball, you're making the opposition run. You still might have to do some running to get to get on the ball. Um, but you know, in the end, like I said, we were we were chasing, uh, and it was a, a tough afternoon from that point of view. You know, what I would also say is, I think it's a, just an indication of, of what we kind of knew coming into the season and the challenges ahead. How tough that's going to be. It almost feel, or I've spoke about trying to treat games like cup finals. And I think there's an element of it almost felt a bit like a cup game in terms of the quality of the opposition. But I want a team that's going to fight and scrap and do that ugly side as well as trying to play some decent football. Uh, and on that side, like I said, we've definitely got some work to do. The fact you've conceded seven goals here this, this week as well, how much of a concern is that so early in the season, Paul? Look, let's, there's no hiding place. I think there's a couple of players that look like they're short on confidence already. And I, I said midweek, I don't buy it, as in we're only two games in. But that's how it looks. And, you know, again, this game is, is unforgiving. I think in terms of, I've said it many times before, just said it to the players again there, as a fan base, they are extremely loyal, extremely almost forgiving. And for the amount of people to stand and clap the players off, we, you know, we got to try and give them something back for that because they're not the the horrible uh, um, fans that you can get at some club just because the, a result goes against them. You know, they, they're willing the team and everyone to do well. Um, we've got to, so it, I don't think it's the hardest place to play from that point of view. So the lads have got to sort of really find it within themselves. We, I'll try whatever I can do, but ultimately, I said, when you step across that white line and you're out there, you've perhaps got your teammates. It can be a lonely place if you're not in the best headspace. And I think as it progressed, certainly, a couple perhaps looked like they, they were finding it tough out there. It had all started so promisingly as well. What a strike from, from Carl Winchester, his first goal for, for Shrewsbury Town and, and the, the manner of it as well. It was a special strike, wasn't it? Yeah, well, look, I think you always know what you're going to get from, from Winnie and I think he you know, he was the one that was trying to... Not the only one, in fairness, but he's always the one that you feel is going to be on the front foot and try and win the ball and win his tackles. And, he, you know, against a very difficult opponent, a couple of times he didn't quite get that 100% right. But 
he was on the front foot, I think, to intercept the ball. It kind of set up nicely, he hit it. I don't know if it took a bit of a deflection. Um, I'm pretty sure it's his goal. I'd, I'd be disappointed if it's taken away from him. Um, and perhaps that stat you've just given me there indicates that's not what he's particularly in the team for. Um, but a nice moment for, for him as an individual. How's Morgan Feeney who went off midway through the first half? Um, he, he had a, an hamstring issue during pre-season where he missed the, I think it was the Brackley game, the first game. But then it went because he was more uh, like neural than anything. Um, he said it felt similar, but then in there saying, you know, it, it doesn't feel too bad in one sense, but sore in another. So I'm not really sure what that means, in all honesty. Um, but we'll have to see. It's too early at this minute, moment to say. But it was a, a bad afternoon for in terms of scoreline result. Bad afternoon in losing him, potentially, or, and certainly on the day. And we also lost Jordan Rotter in the warm up. Now, very early days, but he felt something in his in his knee. Um, we already know where we're at numbers wise. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, not not my uh, my best afternoon. That's for sure. So still waiting for, for more clarification, if you like, the extent of the problems with Morgan and uh, Jordan. Yeah, absolutely. Look, we, we you know, obviously there's a good chance that he might have to go for a scan or something like that. But ultimately, um, you know, we're only just what 20 minutes after kick uh, final whistle, so we'll have to wait and see and just keep his fingers crossed realistically. Nice to get Charles Sago Jr. involved off the bench as part of those attacking changes in the second half. He was, yeah. Um, and in fairness, Charles trained yesterday and the day before again. There's only so much you can do. Um, and as I've touched on, has not had as much football as he would have liked, really, in, in during pre-season. So there's an element of we're going to have to be patient, but at the same time, you know, he might have to just see if we can get up to speed as, as quickly as possible, as we just discussed, numbers, etc. Um, but I'm sure it's a bit of an eye-opener for him um, in terms of what he witnessed or was part of uh, towards the end. But, you know, it's very early days for him. Hopefully I'm sure that he can have some good, good times with us. Is there any update with Josh Feeney as well, by the way, who of course had the hamstring issue ahead of the, the opener at Stevenage? Uh, nothing really that I can give you any detail on other than he said he's feeling quite good and he thinks it'll be quicker than, than was first perhaps uh, indicated. So he, he seemed quite positive. Um, I would, I'm hoping that's right, but just dampen it slightly as in he hasn't had a muscular injury previously. So w like when he first did it for instance, and so he kind of a little bit unsure of, of what he's feeling and where he's at, so we'll see. Uh, I'm sure he's getting good treatment at Aston Villa and I think the plan will be to also get him for a couple of days, uh, either next week or the week after, um, so we can, you know, he can really get to be part of that group, which he is, kind of is already, uh, despite the injury, but just we want him to, you know, feel part of it. And just finally, you've got another game again, haven't you, on, on Tuesday, the, the opening group game in the EFL Trophy against Fulham under 21. Just a busy start to the season, isn't it? How are you going to approach that one in terms of potentially trying to rest players and put a competitive team out? I'm not really sure we can rest players, Stuart. In, 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 in truth, I think we will have to see where we're at Monday. And then, you know, it might be a case for me having to pick a team um, through personnel and trying to keep people or get people um, minutes that need them. So I like study right now, I'm not exactly sure what that team will look like, but I expect it to be a strong team, but it might have to go away slightly from, you know, a formation or that we've, you know, preferred. Um, we'll have to see, I, I, like I said, I'm definitely gonna have some thinking to do over the weekend and also, you know, just checking in first thing on Monday morning or, or, and tomorrow around who is fit and available um, as we go to that game and then obviously Huddersfield away next Saturday so it certainly doesn't get any easier that's for sure but we, you know one thing we won't allow is to, to feel sorry for ourselves we've got to dust ourselves down and, and get on with it and that's difficult to do on, on the back of a defeat like that but ultimately we 
that's the industry you're in, that's the, the reality of it. And it will be, you know, we have to sort of treat it as part of the process, have that little bit of hurt, a bit of adversity, and, and try and come through that. Thanks for your time.